Okay, here's another factoring problem. Kind of looks like this a little bit, right? Because there's two terms. Um, but it's not exactly like this because nothing, well, I don't know, 64. There is something being squared to give you 64, isn't there? Um, is there anything that's being squared to give you x to the ninth? X cubed. X cubed squared? No, that's x to the sixth. All right, no, there's nothing. Okay, not a whole not a whole exponent anyway. All right, what about 125? Do you square something to get 125? No, you don't. What about y to the sixth? Sure, you could square something to get y to the sixth. Okay, y to the cubed, right? But that's not what this is. This is not a sum of, plus anyway, we don't even have a sum of two squares, do we? Even if it was squared. Um, but we do have a sum of two what? What do you think everything's, what do you think's going on? Everything here is being squared, but what's going on here? There's something that's being what? Cubed, that's right. What's being cubed to give you 64? Eight. eight cubed, four. eight times eight times eight? Four, right. Four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. So four is being cubed. What's cubed to give you x to the ninth? x squared. x squared cubed is not x to the ninth. x squared cubed is x to the sixth, right? Because you multiply the exponents together. Huh? No. No, there is something that's being cubed. There is something. If there wasn't, then this would not be a sum of two cubes, and I'd be wasting my time anyway doing this, okay? So there is something that's being cubed to give you x to the ninth. Come on, think about it. What is being cubed to give you x to the ninth? Well, you know there's going to be an x in here, right? So x to the what cubed is going to be? x to the 6? What's the rule? The rule is you take these two numbers, and what do you do? You multiply them together, right? So 6 times 3 is not 9. What times 3 is 9? 3. x cubed cubed, right? x to the third cubed is x to the ninth. you got to know those rules. That's scaring me a little bit right there. You guys didn't know that. So watch. x to the third. Watch. This whole thing is being cubed. Plus. Now what's being cubed here? 5. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125, so 5 is being cubed. What's being cubed here? So y to the what cubed equals y to the 6. It's not cubed, is it? Because that would be to the ninth. What is it? It's y to the second, right? Because you multiply the exponents to get to this. So y squared is being cubed. Why did I care what was being cubed? Because my little formula that I know for the sum of two cubes has to start with this cubed plus this cubed. Watch, let's just do this for um, review's sake. What if I had a cubed plus b cubed? You gotta know this formula and you have to memorize it. If you don't have this memorized by tomorrow, uh, then it's your fault, okay? Because I've told you a long time ago, all right, that you have to memorize this thing. So that's gonna be, let's do the signs first, I'm sorry. Let's do the signs first. It's same, opposite, positive. So that's same, opposite, and that's positive. Agreed? So what goes here? A and B. On the ends here, A squared and B squared. In the middle, A times B. You have to memorize that. If you don't have that memorized, you haven't done enough. All right? Let's go to this. Instead of A plus B, what's our A? 4x cubed. That's right. So that is the A, isn't it? What's the B? This right here, 5y squared. That right there is the b. So every time you see an a, you're going to put in a 4x cubed. Every time you see a b, you're going to put in 5y squared. And then you're just going to do the stuff. Sometimes you got to multiply some things together. Sometimes you have to square some things. But that's basically what we're doing. So let's do this. Put a big parenthesis here and a, well, a bigger one over here on this side. Let's do the signs. So it's the same. It's the opposite. And it's positive. Put it right there that look like a real plus. Okay? What goes here? It's a plus b. So the a goes here. What's my a? It's 4x cubed, right? Because that right there is the a. What's the b? It's 5y squared, right? That's the a. That's the b. a goes here. b goes here. Now, what goes here? a squared. So i got to take this a and i got to square it. So if I square 4, I get 16. If I square x cubed, x cubed squared is x to the what? x cubed squared. What do you do with the exponents? x to the 6. Look, x cubed squared. The rule is you multiply those exponents together. 
so it's x to the 6. Let's do, I always like to do the outside next. So take this thing and square it, the 5y squared. Square that. You get 25. What if I take y squared and square it? What do I get? y squared, square it, I get what? y to the fourth. Now what do we do? The inside, we take a and b, put them next to each other. We don't just put them next to each other. What's going on here? They're being multiplied. So let's take this a and this b, multiply them together. 4 times 5 is 20, and then x cubed and y squared. Bang, I'm done. Just like that. The key to this problem is just plugging and chugging, but you got to know what you're plugging it into, right? You're plugging it into this. You have to know this. If you don't know this, you don't have a chance. <laughs> Be honest with you, all right? But if you know how to do this, then it's not that hard at all. Look, the only math really had to do was what? Just square a couple things, multiply a couple things together. That was it. You got it? All right, go over it, review it. Don't let this be the only time you look at it before you take the test tomorrow. All right, they give you a hint on this one, too. That's nice of them. It says factor by substitution. So we're not going to factor it like this because it almost looks like one of those trinomial factorings except for one, well, a couple big problems. First of all, this is not z squared. What is it? It's z to the fourth. And this is not just a z. It's what? It's z squared. If it was, if this was just like 15x squared and this was a minus 8x, then I could probably deal with it. Right? So what we're going to do is like, okay, well, if I could deal with this if this was x squared and this was x, let's do this. Let what? x equal z squared. z squared. Good. Not z to the fourth because this is z squared squared. We're letting this one right here. Whatever that one is right there, we're letting that become x. All right? So let's rewrite it. Instead of 8z squared, we're going to write it as an 8x. Instead of z to the fourth, we're going to write it as x squared x squared, right? So it's going to be 15x squared minus 8x minus 16. That's a little bit more manageable to work with, okay? I could probably factor something like this, all right? Maybe I got a calculator out because a little arithmetic here. I don't know if I can do all this in my head. Let's factor this thing. Now, we could just put a couple parentheses, right, and um, play around with it and see what works. Or we could go straight to this. Now, these numbers are a little bit bigger. So what's 15 times 16? 240? OK. Here's the deal. we got to figure out what multiplies to be 240 and also adds up to be what? What are we looking for that they add up to be? Negative 8. Negative 8, right. OK. So we got to find two numbers that multiply to be 240 and add up to be negative 8. 20 and 12, okay, that looks good. So, and um, this is positive and this is negative, so this is going to be what? Negative 20, negative 12, and this is going to be negative, oh, uh, that's not going to work, is it? No, because negative 20 plus negative 12, oh, this has to be negative 240, I'm sorry. That will, those numbers will work. I forgot to put the negative 240 here, all right? Sorry about that. Um, and we're going to make the 12 positive. How did I know to make the 20 negative? Because when I add them up, it's got to be negative, so the bigger one's got to be negative, okay? All right, so that works pretty nice, doesn't it? 20 and 12. So what do I do? I come over here, take the 15x squared, and instead of writing negative 8x, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write it as negative 20x plus 12x and then minus 16. Would you agree that this is the same thing as this right here? Now we group them. Now, this grouping, for once, is nice because you got a plus right here, don't you? So you don't have to change this sign in here, do you? The only time you change this sign is if this was a minus. Now, let's factor this. What goes into both of those? 5x, and then we get what? 3x minus 4, right? Plus, in fact, what goes into both of these? 4, just a 4, right? And then what do we get? 3x minus 4, all right? Greatest common factor, 3x minus 4. And then uh, if we factor that out of both of these, what do we get? A 5x plus 4. Now look, we went through all this. If you wanted to, you could have just you could have just said, all right, I got two parentheses. Hmm, I wonder what times what is 15, you know? But you might have guessed it right. I mean, 15, I probably would have guessed 5 and 3, wouldn't you? 
and four and sixteen, I probably would have guessed four and four. So you may have guessed right off the bat. You might have got it right right off the bat. Okay, but you might have guessed wrong and had to try a whole bunch of things because there are a couple of options for fifteen, a couple of options for sixteen. So um, yeah, that could have taken you a while. Just depends on how lucky you got on the numbers that you chose. Now this is not the answer though, is it? It's not 3x minus 4 and 5x plus 4 because what do we say? We're going to let x equal z squared. So instead of x, what's this going to be? It's going to be 3z squared minus 4. And this is going to be what? 5z squared plus 4. Is that how they write the answer? Uh, that's how you yep. And there you go. And that's how you do it. Yep, that's exactly right. I just put this first and that second. That doesn't make any difference. Yeah. yeah, it makes no difference what order the two parentheses are in. All right, that's it. Look, man, I went 1 through 20. I hit every single one. And I'm telling you, the test looks very, very close to what this worksheet right here looks like. Okay, Numbers are just a little different. But the style of problem, the order that they're in, I believe, off the top of my head, I think everything looks pretty close to what this worksheet looks like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You keep these till tomorrow. You've got this thing to look at on YouTube. You got four of these things. So that's what? That's a uh, that's an hour. All right. If you have to see every single one. You might not have to watch every single one. Just fast forward to the ones, right? That you really need some help on. And try them yourself. Don't just sit there and watch the computer and watch me do them. All right. You have got to try them yourself. That's the only way that you're gonna be able to learn how to do these if you do them yourself, not just sitting and watching me. Okay? All right. All right, so test tomorrow, and um, we'll do corrections Friday, and then you can enjoy your break. Mm -hmm.